What's up guys, welcome back. And today we're gonna to be going over my top 10 places to visit in Iceland. All right guys, so jumping right in, Iceland is probably the most insane country I've ever been to. As far as landscapes go, like it honestly feels like you're on another planet the entire time you're there. It's such a cool place. It's pretty much a country just filled with volcanoes, geysers, hot springs, lava fields, probably a hundred thousand waterfalls like you literally can't count them because every minute that you drive you pass like three more on the highway it's insane the capital of iceland is reykjavik and reykjavik is actually run completely on geothermal power because there's so much geothermal energy through the country of iceland it's a big geothermal hotspot so there's also tons of museums here tracing all the way back to Iceland's Viking history, which is pretty insane. It's widely known as the land of fire and ice and it's home to some of the biggest glaciers in Europe and some of the world's most active volcanoes. All right, so first and foremost, I just wanted to put Dinjandi at the top of the list because this is the craziest waterfall I've seen in my entire life. The, the main part of Dinjandi is massive and it's the biggest cascading waterfall I've ever seen. And then if you just step back a little bit of the hike, there's two other massive waterfalls. So from the parking lot, Jinjandi is actually 100 meters tall, I think between all of them, but it's insane to even like comprehend how big this waterfall is. Jinjandi is in the West Fjords and it's probably about a seven hour detour from Route 1 or the Ring Road. But if you have the time, it's totally worth it. And the West Fjords themselves are some of the most beautiful parts of Iceland and some of the most remote landscapes. So you'll see a ton of awesome stuff on the way and it's gonna be a beautiful drive the entire way. And next up still in the West Fjords is Latrabarg, and this is the furthest western tip of Iceland and actually the westernmost point of Europe. It's home to millions of birds, puffins, gannets, razorbills, and a ton more. When you're actually at the tip of Latrabarg, it's just surrounded by massive, massive cliffs. It's a really cool place mainly because of the wildlife. This is actually where we shot the puffins, and I know that you can see puffins elsewhere in Iceland, so you don't have to drive all the way out here because it's completely out of the way. But Bree and I just really wanted to do it and based on the time of year we went, we knew that we were guaranteed to see puffins there and the rest of our trip we hadn't seen any. So Bree ended up driving through the night and we made it there and, and it was so sick. So it's, it's the perfect place to kind of just hang out for the afternoon, kind of walk along the hiking paths of the cliffs and just kind of watch the birds. They're some of the most unique looking birds I've ever seen and the puffins are just like these cute little penguin-y looking things. <laughs> I don't even, not really sure. It's so cool. Next up is Dedefoss, and this is in Vatnajökull National Park. And before I go any further, I just want to apologize if I'm pronouncing anything wrong in this video. Iceland has so many crazy words, and they're so hard to pronounce, so I'm probably getting all of these wrong. Uh, but yeah, Dedefoss is the most powerful waterfall in all of Europe, and it's super, super cool because you can kind of just see by watching it the sheer magnitude of how strong this thing is. Um, and it's just a really cool, easy hike park and it's probably like a 20 minute walk. And another thing that's really cool about Dedefoss is that there's so much spray that comes up that the canyon on the other side forms these crazy looking abstract like marbling patterns. I'm not really sure why that is, what the deal is with that, but it's really, really cool looking. I would have loved to have asked someone and found out what the reason of it was, but we went at like 4 a.m. for sunrise and we were the only ones there. All right, next up is Krafla Lava Fields, and this is kind of like a whole area in Northern Iceland. It's not so much that I've pinned an exact location, but the lava fields, there's a bunch of spots in this general like 
probably eight mile radius. So this is a huge, huge geothermal hotspot. You can kind of smell it as you're driving around. Parts of it definitely stink depending on where you are. But it's so cool because if you're looking around, there's just black lava fields, there's smoke geysers coming out of the ground, there's mountains everywhere, there's no people in sight. It's really crazy. So some hot spots in this kind of region to check out are, I'm definitely gonna get these pronunciations wrong, but Hevir, uh, Mivatan, Dimmuberger, <laughs> Lake Mivatan, and Bidi Crater Volcano. So definitely if you're up in this region of Iceland, check it out and you can spend a few days here or just one day. They're all so close that you can kind of just check out all these spots, but a super cool area. Also, if you're a Game of Thrones fans, right down the road from here is where Jon Snow lost his virginity and it's a really cool cave. So definitely check it out. All right, next up is River Deltas. And this, again, isn't a single location because river deltas are actually all over the country of Iceland, but it's kind of just a place that if you're able to, and especially if you have a drone, you should totally check it out. All right, so river deltas are a landform created by deposition of rock sediment that's carried by a river. As it flows, it leaves its mouth and enters a slower moving or stagnant water. This kind of just occurs where rivers, lakes, reservoirs, or anything like that kind of runs and meets with the ocean. So like this spot, this was like this huge lake river kind of thing that led right into the ocean. Just over this little bridge was the only point where it connected. We were just looking on Google Maps and we saw these patterns on the satellite view and they looked insane. So actually standing there, we couldn't see anything, but there's these cool reflections and everything. But then when I threw the drone up, it was just these crazy, crazy patterns. It was super cool. I'm not even gonna attempt to pronounce this one because this is, I have no clue. <laughs> but this is in the highlands in Iceland, so you do need a four x four to get here. But I was surprised. I thought this was gonna be super deep in the highlands, but it's actually, the road went pretty close to this place. It was only until the last point where you actually needed the four x four. Another cool thing about this is that Danny had been here before and I hadn't. So Danny stopped the car and he was like, hey, we're here. And I just look around and I see absolutely nothing. And I was like, what are you, what are you talking about? He's like, you know, just walk over there about a hundred feet. So I did and I looked over and it's just this massive canyon with so many waterfalls flowing into it, just kind of creating this crazy aqua blue river. And it was so cool. And like, thankfully he knew where it was and he had been there before. Otherwise, I probably would have never seen this thing. So it's a little bit hard to find and there's definitely not service out here, but this is a super cool spot if you do have a four x four and if you plan on heading into the highlands. All right, so next up is Brewer Frost. And this is just a really cool waterfall in my opinion. It's just kind of a bunch of little smaller cascading falls that lead into this pool that kind of like, the way the river flows and the current flows creates this like cool line of aqua water in the river that kind of just looks like cotton candy, honestly. And this waterfall is actually around a bunch of other waterfalls where you can just park, get out, and you're at the waterfall. And this waterfall is about a one hour flat hike, super easy. But because of that, I think most people skip it because there's so many other options of waterfalls to go to where you don't have to walk. So when we were there, I think there was only like two other people and they came like around the time we were leaving. So it has a more remote feel to it, which is pretty cool. But yeah, this is a super beautiful waterfall. Next up is Solheimadrokul Glacier, and this is in Southern Iceland, and it's between two volcanoes and this cool canyon looking thing. And it's part of the Myrdalsdrokul Glacier, which is the biggest glacier in Iceland. And it's super easy to access. You pretty much just park, walk right up to it, and you can explore the entire glacier that way. But if you actually want to get on the glacier yourself, you do need to book a tour for safety reasons and unless you have your own equipment. I wouldn't say that this glacier was necessarily 
cooler than other glaciers that I had visited in Iceland. But I think just because we did this glacier climb and we were hacking away with crampons and ice axes, it just kind of holds like a special place in my heart. It's a super, super cool spot and a fun activity if you want to climb on some glaciers. All right, so next up is Glacier Lagoon in Diamond Beach, and this is in Southern Iceland. Super, super easy to access. You can actually see where Bree and I slept the one night that we were there. We had just pulled over into this little pull off on the side of the road. So we just, you know, slept in the back of the van there, overlooking this beautiful, beautiful glacier. It's cool because when you drive to this point, you pass Solheim Ajokal Glacier and Svinnevels Ajokal Glacier, and both of the lagoons in those glacier are like kind of this deep, muddy, brown water. But Glacier Lagoon is like this bright, bright blue. So it's really, really cool. It definitely makes for some better photos. Right across the ridge is Diamond Beach, and this is kind of where all the glaciers from the lagoon kind of flow through the river and land on the black sand beach. So you're at a beach with the waves just crashing and there's just these giant glaciers that look like diamonds on a black sand beach. So it's just a really, really unique place and it's really cool. All right, so next up is Stocksness and this is where the iconic Vesterhorn Mountain is. It's been in a lot of movie sets like the Bollywood film Do Wale. It's a headland on the Southeast Icelandic coast. It's close to the town of Huffin. And it's really cool, especially for photographers, because there's just so many elements. There's these heaping sand dunes, and then there's the black sand beach, and then there's these rocks that get all the waves crashing on them, and then there's reflections. And whether you're there on a moody day, on a clear day, on, for sunrise, sunset, uh, for northern lights, for stars, for snow, every time is gonna be a different experience in different conditions and it, I think it's really cool and kind of special to that place more than others. All right guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this little top 10 of Iceland. If you're going to Iceland, I hope this helps you in planning your trip. It is such, such an amazing country. You're gonna love it. Uh, anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video.